Well, 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 here's an orchestra. Once upon a time, there was no orchestra, and this is the story of how the first one started. Several thousand years ago in Greece, there was a very lonely shepherd named Pan. The reason Pan was so lonely was that he had nothing at all to do but to keep a lot of silly sheep from getting themselves lost. He never had anybody to talk to. Well, late one evening, when the sheep finally got tired of getting lost, they all lay down to sleep in a big semicircle around Pan. And Pan, who was pretty tired himself, sat down on a rock to rest. Without realizing what he was doing, he grasped a reed that was growing up beside him and pulled it up. And then, still without realizing, he put the open end of it against his lower lip and sighed. The sheep all waked up and pricked up their ears. And Pan was so surprised that he almost fell off the rock. Then he took a deep breath and blew again. It made exactly the same sound. Now Pan was a very curious fellow, so he wondered whether all reeds would make this same magical sound. He pulled up a longer reed and tried it. Ha! Ah, a lower tone. Pan tried another reed, quite a bit shorter. Amazing! Three different tones. He tried them one after another. And that gave him a wonderful idea. Quickly, he pulled up two more reeds, and with two long pieces of tough grass, he bound all five reeds together, side by side. Then he blew across their open ends. Why, it made a tune, and the sheep liked it. Now, by this time, three other lonely shepherds who had heard the noise came running from their nearby hillsides. What's that thing, they said, pointing at Pan's reeds. These, Pan replied, are my pipes. Well, of course, they all wanted to play too. So Pan made a set of pipes for each of them and showed them how to play his tune. And the first thing you knew, they were playing it in harmony. Pan was so delighted that he began to sing as the others played. Oh, I am the musical shepherd Pan, a most amazing, ingenious man. I trill and toot upon my flute as no other shepherd can, as no other shepherd conceivably can. I used to hate my lonesome job in vain Of chasing rams and ewes and lambs in sun or rain It had me beat the heat, my feet Up hill, down dale, over rocky plain But now I don't object if the hills are steep I sit here at my ease and I herd my sheep they baa and bleat in joy complete While I sit and prettily pipe and peep Oh, I am the musical shepherd Pan Plainly a brainy and clever man I play such swipes upon my pipes As no other shepherd can as no other shepherd, as no other man, as no other human conceivably can. Pan didn't know it, but those pipes of his were really the great, great, great grandfather of all our woodwind instruments. Piccolos, and flutes, and oboes, and clarinets and English horns, and bass clarinets, and bassoons. Even though they all came along hundreds of years after Pan's pipes. Now one day when Pan and his three friends were playing their pipes, 
they saw a strange looking fellow coming toward them. He had a strange looking instrument hung around his neck by a ribbon. It had 10 strings and the man was making music on it by striking the strings with a stick. Who are you, said Pan, and what on earth is that? The fellow said, I am Orpheus, my friends, musician and poet from Thrace. And since you inquire why this is my lyre, its music can tame the wild beasts, move a rock or a tree from its place. At that, Pan said, how do you spell that lyre? And Orpheus said, L-Y-R-E, of course. Pan just said, hmm. Well, Orpheus wanted to make music with the pipers, but they sneered at his lyre. And right there was the beginning of the war of the instruments, which has been going on ever since. The pipers said the lyre was no good. And that made Orpheus pretty mad. Stop, cried Pan. Stop, stop. Maybe we can use this fellow, he said. Of course, I don't believe that story about the rocks and the trees but he is pretty good at getting music out of that thing. Let's try him. You ready, boys? sounded so sweet that then and there they started the world's first orchestra. And of course, Orpheus Lyre became the great-great-grandfather of all the stringed instruments. The harps, the violins, the violas, the violoncellos, the contrabasses. Well, our friends made music together for years and years. And when one of them got too old to play anymore, some younger musician took his place. One of these younger ones discovered that by making a lot of holes in just one reed and blowing across one of them while he opened and closed the others with his fingers, he could make all the different tones with just one reed. That was the world's first flute. Now after a long time, the boys got so good and so famous that they quit being shepherds and began to travel around the world just being musicians. One of their tours took them through a distant jungle where they heard a strange sound. When they came near, they found a man beating on a hollow log with animal skin stretched over one end. What are you doing, they asked. I'm sending a message all over the jungle, he replied. I'm telling my friends about you fellows. And as they went on, they found the drummer had been telling the truth because there were crowds of people in every village they came to waiting to hear them play. drummer wanted to add his thumping to the music. The others didn't want to take him into their orchestra, but they had to because he was a big fellow and very tough. And as time went on, other drummers joined them with different kinds of drums, timpani, kettle drums, that made different tones, and snare drums, that added thrilling sounds to their music. And some of the drummers played bells, and the glockenspiel with its sweet, mysterious notes. And tambourines. And cymbals. And castanets. And a gong. And even a xylophone, which the other instruments called a straw fiddle.
the drummers made up what's called the percussion section of the orchestra. One day, while our friends were giving a concert, a group of ragged-looking men approached them, carrying ram's horns, which they put to their lips and blew. Well, a new kind of music. They wanted to join the orchestra, but they could only play those four notes. Ridiculous, said the others. Why, all we could play would be... Well, the horn players went away, but a long time later they came back, and this time they all had metal horns of many shapes and sizes. Some had buttons to press on them, and some had sliding tubes. With those, they could play all the notes. So cornets and trumpets, and trombones, and French horns, and even a tuba were added to the orchestra. By this time, Orpheus Lyre, with only ten strings, had become the harp with many strings. Our modern harps have 46, but it was still the only stringed instrument in the orchestra until our friends met some boys with crude violin-like boxes on which they made sounds by dragging bows across their strings. Some of them, the tromba marinas, had only one string, and the bows looked just like huntsmen's bows. The woodwinds didn't like the sound of their music. They said it squeaked. The brasses thought so too. Even the harp was scornful. But at last, many years later, when the tromba marinas had grown into the contrabasses and the violoncellos and the violas and the violins, the other instruments had to admit that they added some pretty sweet tones to the orchestra. And they said to the strings, Oh, very well, we'll let you play with us too if we must. Now we've got quite an orchestra, haven't we? And to think that it all started with Pan's simple reed pipe. Now you'd have thought that nothing could possibly make the orchestra any better, wouldn't you? It seemed absolutely complete with its woodwinds and its brasses and its strings and its percussion section. Yes, it seemed complete, but every time some musician had invented a new instrument, all the older ones had found a hundred reasons why the new one was no good. But always in the end, they found it made their music sweeter, like the violins and violas. Or more charming, like the flutes and clarinets. Or sadder, like the pleading oboes. Or mellower, like the French horns and English horns. Or fuller, like the cellos and bass viols and bass clarinets and bassoons and double bassoons and tubas. Or more exciting, like the trumpets and trombones and piccolos. <laughs> to 
to say nothing of the percussion section. Yes, the orchestra seemed complete. Until just about a hundred years ago, a man named Adolf Sax invented a brand new instrument which he called the saxophone. It was made of brass and shaped very much like a large meerschaum pipe. But it didn't have a cup-shaped mouthpiece. Instead, its sounds came from blowing through a single reed like the clarinet. But the woodwinds said, Huh, you can't sit with us. You're made of brass. And the brasses snorted, You can't sit with us. You have reeds. And the strings said, Get out, get out, get out. There's no place for you at all. The percussion section just said, but at last, a composer wrote music for the saxophones in his opera, and then the other instruments had to make places for them, and how they added to the music. That's almost the whole story of the reed that grew into an orchestra, but not quite. Because about 60 years ago, a man named August Mustel invented the celesta, a meek little instrument that looked like a small piano, and made sweet, fairy-like music such as no other instrument ever made before. The little celesta was too ladylike and mild to fight for a place in the orchestra, so when the woodwinds and brasses laughed at her, She just blushed and started to walk sadly away. But the strings took her part. Why, they said, we need her. See how much better she makes our mystic feeling when we're muted. And the other instruments could see that the strings were right. So they took the celesta in, and they grew to love her sweet fairy-like tones. So now we have the full orchestra, and they've been living happily together ever since.